Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm Ralph Sexton, and I invite you to stay tuned for the next few moments as we bring to you a very, very special message. Just a few days ago, I had the privilege of preaching at the tent meeting in Bristol, Tennessee, actually across the line in Bristol, Virginia. And the Lord burdened my heart that night about a special message on hell. Hell is not the lake of fire. I want you to stay tuned today. I believe there'll be some things from the Word of God that you'll find most interesting. And then it'll touch your prayer life to think about our family and friends that are not believers. Remember, there is light in hell. We're going to talk about that. But then there's going to be eternal darkness in the lake of fire. Hail is not the lake of fire. So you stay with us. I want to remind all of you about some upcoming events. Our good friends, the Inspirations. We love them, and many of you have decades of love for the Inspirations Quartet and all the great singings we used to have at the Inspiration Park there in Bryson City. Well, they're getting things back together, and this July 4, 5, and 6, we're going to be there at the uh, Great Smoky Mountain Events Park at Bryson City, and the Inspirations are going to be there with many of their friends for a special renewal and bringing back the gospel singing, the great singing in the Smokies to Inspiration Park. That'll be July 4, 5, and 6. If you need additional information, let me read to you a number. It's area code 828-736-1982. That's 828-736-1982. Or you can visit singinginthesmokies.com. That's right, singinginthesmokies.com. And I know that you'll be blessed. We're excited. We're going to be a part. I love Southern gospel music. And I surely love the inspirations, part one, and even the new ones, part two. A great time together. Also, don't forget coming up in, uh, later in July in Asheville, will be the great Land of the Sky Jubilee, and that'll be at Trinity Baptist Church, July 24, 25, 26, 27, and then closing out on the 28th. That's July 24 through the 28th, right here in Asheville at the Trinity Baptist Church. And then I need a special favor. Please put on your calendar, save the date, September 2, Monday night, Johnson City, Tennessee, right on the Bristol Highway. We're gonna have up the big, beautiful new tent, and that's dedication night. I would love for all of you that can to come and be with us. We've got some of your favorite singers. Inspirations are gonna be with us that week. The Wisnets and many, many others. Brother Arthur Rice doing the community choir. It's gonna be a wonderful time together. September 2, put it on your long range calendar. Put it in your smartphone and let's plan to be together. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for being with us. And I want you to stay tuned. I've got some information I want to give you about the ministry. And I think it'll be an encouragement to you. Let's get right in now to Under the Old Gospel Tent and the special, special message on hell is not the lake of fire. When you read Luke 16, listen to me carefully right here. It's just like a man grabbed a microphone and he stepped out of Luke 16. He said, and this is news at Action 6 tonight. You need to know what is happening in hell. It's a report. It's a reporter. It's red letters. We connect that dot. It's red. Jesus is saying this. Not a Baptist preacher. Not a Bible teacher. Not somebody that's trying to put a scare on you that you can say, you're just trying to mess with my psychology being, you're just trying to deal with my psyche, you're just trying to mess with my little mind. Ladies and gentlemen, this is red letters. This is the Action News reporter. And God's son Jesus is giving you the step-by-step, play-by-play description of what's happening in the heart of the earth. Can you imagine that? That Jesus loved me enough, loved you enough, that he said, I'm going to step out and I'm going to report to you what happened here. And look what happened in verse 23. In hell, the rich man, he lifted up his eyes. He is actually illuminated in the fire. 
And notice what he said to Abraham. He said, I'm in torments. Did you circle that? That means more than one torment. More than one. And, and in verse 24, he said, Send Lazarus. Isn't that interesting? And he cried and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. I never will forget the night I was in full-time evangelism back in the early 80s and I was in a little old motel room in Kentucky outside of Louisville. God broke my heart for lost people. And that night at that motel, it was almost like God allowed me to get beside Jesus and walk into hell. I can almost feel what Jesus was describing. And he was talking and he said, listen to him, Ralph. He's so in, engulfed in flames and pain that Ralph, he thinks he can get some help with one drop of water. Boy, I got up. I'd been on my knees between those two beds praying. I went and got a, a motel cup and I filled it up with water and I set it on the nightstand and I dipped my finger in it to the first joint and I lifted it up to the lamp and there was one drop of water. And, and I took every finger on my hand and I dipped it and lifted it. I even took my thumb and lifted it. One drop of water. And that poor rich man said, Oh, Abraham, it's so horrible. If you could just send Lazarus with one drop of water, I could cool my tongue. And boy, that pierced my heart. I've never forgotten that night when God allowed me to walk in there and feel what that poor man must have been going through. The fear, the panic, the anxiety. The rich man's used to telling people what to do. The rich man's used to Lazarus being subjugated. He's at his gate. He's begging for crumbs. But now this poor rich man, he's begging Abraham. Abraham, I can't stand this anymore. Abraham, I'm losing my mind. Oh, for God's sake, have mercy on me and just send me one drop of water. One drop. Because it is so horrible in the torments, the plurality. And out of that temporary holding cell of hell, eternity is still to come. Can you imagine that? That's just the beginning. That's got a beginning and an ending in hell. It's got a start point. It's got an ending point. Hell's not for eternity. The lake of fire is. And it says in Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 1 that there is actually, Pastor Bob, there's actually a key. It's called the key to the bottomless pit. So there, there is a place called the lake of fire, the bottomless pit, and there is a key, the key, to the bottomless pit. And boy, the more you study on this, go down to verse number 10, and it says there's a lake of fire and brimstone. And, and, and think about being in a horrible place. Think about being in torment. Think about all the suffering. But then think about who your companions are. That verse says that the beast is there. That the false prophet is there. Every mass murderer, every mass rapist, every one that has brought violence and pain to the human race is now tumbling and churning in that turmoil of a bottomless pit. The Adolf Hitlers and the Mussolinis, the madmen that tortured human beings in the World War II Holocaust. All of those people are in there. And yet God is saying, look, look, he's saying, there's a key. And, and look what he said. 
He said there in verse number 10, and it says, not only is there fire and brimstone, but he said, they shall be tormented day and night. How long, oh holy God? How long can I burn this sin away? Can I spend 10 years here and then come to heaven? Can I spend 100 years in hell and come to heaven? Can I spend 1,000 years in hell? And Jesus says, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and forever. Verse 14, and death and hell. Oh, here it is. I told you hell had an ending. Here it is, verse 14. Death and hell are now cast into the lake of fire. You say, what are you talking about, preacher Ralph? Hell is in the heart of the earth. It always has been. You know those verses where it says, hell hath enlarged itself? Pastor Roy, I've often wondered when I saw these great volcanic eruptions, was it maybe that there's hell enlarging itself in the heart of the earth? There's so many millions of people going into eternity without God. Is, is, is that the boiling cauldron of fiery judgment in the heart of the earth? Hell has enlarged itself. And, and, and then look what it said in verse 14. Death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And then the word of God calls it the second death. You see, eternity is forever and forever in hell. And God has done something here that you need to really pay attention. I, I, I struggle with the right words to describe the intersection of God's holiness and His anger. You say, what are you talking about, Brother Ralph? We know the Bible talks about righteous indignation. We know that the Bible talks about the anger of a holy God. But when you reject the Lord Jesus Christ, stay with me, listen carefully to my words. When you reject Jesus Christ, when He speaks to you, and you know you're not living right, you know you're not where you need to be, you know you've never been saved, or you have a form of religious activity, and, and the Spirit of God deals with you, and sometimes you can remember holding on to the chair at church or to the bench in front of you and thinking, if I can get outside, turn the radio on, if I can just get to my tunes and put my earbuds in and my headphones, I can dial this out, this voice on the inside. This thing keeps preaching to me, you're not right. When you reject the Lamb of God, you are actually rejecting the love of God. You're rejecting John 3, 16. You're saying, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And you're saying, I don't give a rip. I don't care. You gave your only son. Think about what you're saying. Because when you reject Jesus, you're rejecting the love of God. And when you reject Jesus, you're actually saying out loud to God through your thought process, so what? So he died. So he's your son. And, and you're just saying, it doesn't matter about Calvary. It doesn't matter about the pain and suffering. And when you, listen to me, this is harsh to say, but when you actually reject Jesus Christ, you are worshiping Satan. That's the bottom line. Tonight the Holy Spirit of God's moving in this place. God prepared this night and this service for some eternal soul. I believe that sure as I'm alive and well. Somebody online. We had people getting saved after service last night. And when God begins to move, and I believe God's getting ready to do something in Bristol, Pastor CT's coming, and the team will be here, and you're getting ready to go into five nights next week and three more nights this week, and there's no telling what God's going to do. But you've got to understand that this is not just something for religious entertainment. It's just not to gather together and to hear the musicians and the wonderful choir. It's not just to hear Pastor C.T. and Miss Becky sing a song. As beautiful as that is, we're talking about somebody is going to live somewhere forever and forever. And you need to know what happens here when you reject Jesus. You're rejecting that love of God. 
Thank you for being with us. I pray this message is sobering and separating us from the world of confusion and chaos to think about eternity. There really is a place we'll spend forever and ever. And don't forget, if you want today's message in its entirety, it is available and we'll be happy to send you that information. You can call the 800 number on your screen or you can write to us, Ralph Sexton, P.O. Box 6465 Asheville, and we'll make sure that this is available for you and for your family. I want to encourage all of you to stand with us. We have had to reprint the wonderful support stickers for the nation of Israel. And we want to send you one of these, two of them, five of them, ten, whatever you need for your family and friends that we're going to stand with Israel. We are going to be praying for Israel and they're free. I just want you to know that it's important right now. Genesis 12, 3, God said, I'll bless them that bless thee. Breaks my heart to see America turning against the nation of Israel. And for all of you that can help us financially, no matter what amount, it may be only $5, what, it doesn't matter. Any one of you that writes, calls in today, I want to send you this special revival message on working on the ark, but not on board. You will not believe what all the information covers about what happened in Noah's day and how, how many people were left behind because they didn't believe the word of God. Working on the ark, but not on board. Let's get back under the gospel tent and get back into this special Bible study about hell and the lake of fire. And God will use, listen to me carefully, He'll use all His power and He will use all of His authority to bring His holy anger to full power to judge you for mistreating His only Son. There's something awful and unexplainable about the merger of hell and the lake of fire. But God says, I'm going to take death, I'm going to take hell, and I'm going to merge it for those that have rejected me and rejected my son, and they don't want my grace and my mercy, and I will come together with all of the power I have and all of the authority that I have, and I will bring hell with its descriptive passages here in Luke chapter 16, and I'm going to dump that into the lake of fire for an unbelievable judgment. You say, why would God do that? Why would you reject His Son? Why would you reject the sacrifice? Why would you say some other time, some other place? And so what God's going to do, He's going to bring His full power, His full authority, and He's going to say, you mock my Son, you reject His sacrifice, you said you'd rather have the pleasures of sin for a season, then, if that's your answer, I'm going to merge all the torments of hell. And I'm going to have you to understand that you don't have to be in hell. And you're going to have the eternal knowledge that you don't have to be lost. Now what happens when God merges hell with a lake of fire. God's anger and God's wrath is melted together because we disregarded His hand of mercy and grace. Watch me. I'm going to approach the throne of God. There's the Word of God. That's the living Lamb. That's the Lord Jesus. That represents God Almighty. Tonight, the word saying, whosoever will may come. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I know I'm not saved. I'm a skeptic. I'm a cynic. I may say I'm an atheist. I may say I'm an agnostic. I may be a lost church member. I may have a form of godliness. I may be a Sunday school teacher. Maybe like that guy that I was preaching for up in, uh, uh, right outside of Washington, D.C. Maybe a lost pastor, pastor in a church. It doesn't matter your position. What matters is your soul. Is it right with God? And so tonight, look where I am. He's calling me. There's grace and there's mercy. But if I reject Him, then I'm moving away. If He calls me, I'm moving away. And then if I die tonight or if the Lord comes, 
guess what happens? Now, there's no second chance. No, I, I, I can't go back to, to Tuesday night under the tent in Bristol. I, I can't go back to Sunday morning at the church when the pastor's preaching. It's too late. I can't go back to my mom or my granddaddy praying for me. No, it's too late. And from that moment that God gavels you guilty at the great white throne judgment, then what does he say? Listen to the words. Depart from me. So from tonight, tonight for all eternity, I am actually moving away from God. When I get drunk, what kind of pit did we say that pit was according to the Bible? So what does that mean if there's no bottom? Then you're going to fall forever and forever and forever and forever. You say that's impossible. Ask any secular unsaved scientist and they'll tell you there's no end to the universe. There's no end. They, they've, they've got super, super duper all kinds of telescopes that are off satellites in space and they can see millions of light years away and they've already said there's no end to this. It just keeps going. So if God wants to have a bottomless pit, that's not a problem. And, and so he said, I'm going to put you in that bottomless pit and so for all eternity you will be moving away from God. So what does that mean? That means tonight, in this service, that you're the closest to God you're ever going to be. For all eternity. Right here. That's it. You'll never have a night any closer for the Holy Spirit of God to draw you. You, you say, but Brother Ralph, what will my wife think? What will my husband think? What will my parents think? They'll think you want to go to heaven. They will think you want to know that you know you've been born again. Remember the bottomless pit? It, there's no light there. I told you jail, lights on. Bottomless pit, lights off. You say, well, what about the flames? Have you ever seen an Indy race car driver doing a fuel? And you got this big guy up there wrapped in aluminum foil. He's a fuel guy. He's on the fuel can. And the car speeds off. And you see him with those big mitts. And he's doing this. You know what he's doing? He's trying to put the fire out. He's on fire. Well, I didn't see any flames. No, that's alcohol. He's burning. You can't see that. If a, if a scientist can make a flame that can burn you and you can't see it in a lab, that's not going to be a problem for God to have a bottomless pit with no light in it and yet it'll have the flame and torment of all eternity. So you're falling in there. You're rolling in that. Have you ever slipped on ice and that little takes your breath? You know you're going to fall, huh? Think about having that sensation forever. I'm falling. But I'm in the dark. And yet I can hear the screams around me. I can hear people begging for mercy, calling out to God. But it's too late. Rolling and falling. And, and what we don't process is the horrors of this lake of fire. We don't think about that when we think about our own children, our own grandchildren, our best friend. Your mama and your daddy have saved you from every disaster in your life. They love you. They've spent their life working for you. They helped you buy your first car. They wanted to make sure you went to the best school. You had the clothes. But one day, if you reject the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the judgment's over, and you drop down into that darkness, the first thing you're going to do is go, Mama! Oh, Mama! Come and get me, Mama! Mama, please! Oh, God! Oh, God, send my mama! And your mama can't come and get you because you have walked against the love and grace of God. You're going to yell for your daddy. You're going to yell for your husband, your wife, and say, will you rescue me? But the awfulness of an eternity without a holy God in your life is going to be an unbelievable event. No bottom, tossing, falling, total darkness, tormented, the multiple torments, no hope. Could there be anything more horrible than no hope? Because in that darkness you'll realize there's no tomorrow. There's no end to this. There's no hope. And do you realize 
Think about this. You ever had a, a, a moment of anxiety or fear? Some of you may have had a panic attack. Thinking about having a panic attack for eternity. The panic. What's the panic? I'm alone. Do you like being alone? Do you like being all by yourself? Do you like being all by yourself in the darkness? Do you like being alone by yourself in the darkness, falling out of control? Do you like being alone in the darkness by yourself, falling afraid, scared? Do you like feeling the fellowship and hand of a demon or a, a being that's in that lake of fire? We, we don't process this. We live such a, a, a sheltered life, forever scared, forever afraid. And yet I think one of the greatest judgments of all is that I'll never have a human touch again. No hand, no arm, no hug, no kiss, all alone. There really is a place called hell. And there really is a place called heaven. And I want you to be ready to go to heaven. Thank you for being with us today. Most unusual message, I think you'd have to agree. Most people don't think about the fact that hell actually will have illumination. There's lights. The rich man, he saw Lazarus across the great divide in Abraham's bosom. The light, the illumination was there. But we also know the Bible teaches that there's eternal darkness in the lake of fire. And that's what the Bible study is all about. Hell is a jail and the lake of fire is that eternal prison. You can summarize it and say, lights on, lights off. What a sobering thought. Thank you for praying for us. If you want the message in its entirety, the number's up on your screen. Our website's there. You can write to us, email us. We'll be happy to send you today's message. It's all available on DVD with all the research. If you can help us this week, a gift of any size, I want to send you this revival message, working on the ark, but not on board. And don't forget, we've got the wonderful bumper stickers showing support for Israel. They're absolutely free. You call us today. That number on your screen, we got people standing by to talk to you today. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your love. Let's keep praying for revival in America.